stepping beyond your belief unless there is a steel center in the midst middle of the death zone unless a person is in midst of all their activities preserve the secret room in their heart where they stand alone before God unless we do this we will lose all sense of a spiritual direction and be torn to pieces belief doesn't automatically cause life change that's probably one of the biggest hiccups in evangelism today we think that if we know something in our heads we are automatically going to act on it not the case that's why there are so many believers stuck on the log of a fleshly living we have to step beyond belief in the brain only we need to be willing to take a faith step by counting on it in our souls now if we died with christ we believe that we will also live with him in the same way count yourselves dead to sin but alive to god in christ jesus offer yourselves to god as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instrument of righteousness romans 6 part 8 11 and 13 the word count means to mark it down, to reckon it as right, to make an account of it. It is what an accountant does, does when he is keeping his books. Writing it down doesn't make it true. It is true, so he writes it down. It is true that we are dead to sin but alive to Christ. Count it. This is the great bridge between belief and application. It's where we begin to personally own through and begin to count on it as we face battles in the real world. Are you a minister trying to flesh out a life of service and sacrifice for your congregation? Are you a single adult constantly desiring and constantly being pressured sexually? Are you a teenager trying to just say no to drugs and alcohol? Are you a parent desperately trying to control your tongue with your kids? Take a little advice from the Zark Mark. Find a quiet place in the midst of your storm right now where you can stand alone with God and embrace the truth of His Spirit in you. Then count on Him to make that truth a reality. Holy God, I am counting on the truth that in Christ I am dead to sin and alive to you. I lay before you the temptation that I am facing today because I am alive in you. I count on the fact that I am dead to these things. I freely turn away from them now. By the power of your spirit in my spirit, lead me in the holy, everlasting way. Amen. Living as an offering. A vision of the possibilities should never overshadow the clear biblical principle that when we are weak then we really are strong because God's power is allowed full expression in our weakness. We've been investigating the question, how do I live in holiness? That's a heavy sounding question and it seems like the answer is going to be loaded with a bunch of religious do-it-yourself pressure. But the answer that Paul gives has none of that. No, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. In the same way, count your, yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the part of your body to him as instrument of righteousness. Romans 6 part 8 11 and 13
That's pretty straightforward. If we want to live holy lives, we actually step into what Christ has already done and then lay ourselves before him to be used in any way that he sees fit. Believe that you live in with him. Count yourself dead to sin. Offer yourself to God as his instrument and righteousness. What is your struggle today? What tasks are you facing? What temptations are clowning to you? Where do you feel inadequate for the challenges in front of you? Surrender and offer your body to him. Dear God, I don't want to function in my own strength. I lay myself in your hands to be used as an instrument of righteousness. I give you my mind that I might think your thoughts. I give you my heart that I might love as you love. I give you my hands that I might serve as you serve. I give you my lips and my tongue that my words might give grace to all who hear. I offer it all to you, Lord. Do with me what you wish. Amen. Tapping into the power of a habit. Habit is habit and not to be flung out of the window by any man but coaxed downstairs a step at a time. A long time ago in a house far, far away, my kids learned to walk. First a scotch became a crawl, then a crawl became a stand, then a stand became a step, followed immediately by a fall, then another step followed by another fall, then one day two steps in a row, then three. Soon enough the stumbles became the ex exception. By the time they were taking 25 to 30 steps in a row, we knew they had it done. They had learned to walk just like we are learning to walk in holiness. You see where I am going here, don't you? Immediate on the words of Paul again. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live in him. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. Romans 6 part 8, 11 and 13. Most experts say it takes 25 to 30 days to create a new habit. After that things be become more automatic. By tapping into the power of a habit one step at a time, the rest of your life can be changed. Believe that you live with him. Count yourself dead to sin. Offer yourself to God as his instrument and righteousness. Believe, count, offer. Believe, count, offer. It's the God's given pattern that draws uh, you into dependent intimacy with him moment by moment and makes walking in holiness a natural habit. Want to stay on the floor or are you ready to take some steps and some stumbles to learn to the walk? For the next 30 days, write these words in your journal or place them on a card by your mirror or on your dashboard. Remind yourself of this great truth and ask the Lord to make believe can't offer your way of life. Holy Spirit, I want to walk in your holiness as naturally as I've learned to walk on the ground. I am willing to make the jump, but I am fully dependent on you to make happen. I trust in you to take my body and use it as your instrument and righteousness. Amen.